Imagine your perfect library. You might envision wonderful windows, dramatic, light-drenched spaces, an impressionist's palette of bright, pure colors, walls lined with beautiful books, overflowing wooden bookcases, comfortable club chairs with a soft glow of lamps, a room with space to sit and contemplate, to read and write in, to share books with family, and to converse in with friends. A decor that offers up a visual feast, designed to delight the eye and stimulate the senses. An interior that beckons the visitor to linger, explore, and experience the magic of the printed and spoken word. This is what a public library can be. In our new renovation project, the Salem Church Branch in Spotsylvania County, Virginia, we abandoned aisles of steel stacks and the post-World War II government building look that has dominated the public library for decades. We shamelessly borrowed from the best of beloved old bookstores, modern Starbucks, Barnes & Noble, high-end department stores, old university reading rooms, and the great American public libraries of the past and present, deliberately fusing them into a single 26,000 square foot space with a lean budget. The results are customer driven. The non-fiction collection is in Dewey order, but each bookcase has a popular subject sign. The shelving layout is perpendicular, arranged to encourage meandering in the browsing experience rather than walking up and down narrow, linear lines. Shelving areas are interspersed with club chairs. New books glow against cherry zigzag display walls that alternate wooden bookcases with slat wall or are pyramided on wooden display units on casters, each capped with a topical sign. Collection areas are defined with dropped curbing ceiling soffits studded with directional lights, bold colors, and great graphics. Spaces are also delineated with wave walls of tinted glass, varying floor treatments, and ceiling heights. No freestanding bookcase is over 66 inches, and there is a clear sight line throughout the building. This library is all about people, books, and discovery. Media is given a prime place, and there is abundant technology seamlessly integrated into every area. But it's the books that steal the show. The books are the must-have merchandise the objects of our desire. In pyramid displays on slat wall racks and wooden bookcases, beautiful, bountiful and tempting, the books beg to be touched, opened, lingered over, thumbed through, stacked up in arm loads and taken home. Instead of designing a building to hold the existing collection size, we decided to let the browsing experience determine the number of books. The number of items that could be displayed and shelved comfortably would become the magic collection number. People space would be just as important as collection space. Display space was just as important as shelving. We wanted warm, bright color, ambient lighting, and wonderful graphics integrated throughout the building. The signage would be in popular terminology and user-friendly. We took a library with 100,000 items, added 10,000 square feet, and then judiciously pared down the collection. Yet, person after person has commented on how many more books are in the new library. The visual accessibility of the books, arranged into neighborhoods with a display shelf on each unit, is almost lavish. We had no opening day collection budget, so we chose the brightest and most beautiful books, washing covers and recycling the most popular titles. Two years worth of circulation statistics and use patterns were analyzed. We found that the 600s, home to the practical subjects of cooking, home, DIY, parenting, health and diet, 
dominated almost one quarter of all adult nonfiction checkouts. So, we allocated them to a corresponding one quarter of all the nonfiction shelving. Other big categories were the 900s, with history, travel, and biographies, and the 700s with an arts power wall. The only category we cheated on was the 800s, adding a bit extra to our formula, because this is still very much a library. So it turns out that making a library be all about beauty, fun, discovery, comfort, color, and sensory delight speaks to all ages. At the grand opening, I heard teens wishing aloud if they could just live in the teen space. I heard children begging to make this their library instead of their formerly beloved neighborhood branch. I spoke to seniors who tearfully thanked us for this beautiful new library. I saw politicians standing bemused in front of a glittering wall of face-out books. Somehow, this hybrid of what America does best, publicly, corporately, and privately, has morphed into a new American model. A library that is truly about people and delivering what it is they really want. A great contemporary experience in a beloved institution. <laughs>